Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my studio. Today's tutorial will be super relaxing because I get so many messages from you and you say that watching my videos helps you to relax, release headache and a lot of nervous tension. And that seems to be quite a thing nowadays, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, for today, I will show you how to sketch clouds. And that's why I thought it would be such a fitting subject matter for a super duper relaxing tutorial. If you would like to follow along, these are the materials you would need. A piece of white paper for drawing, some pencils, different types of erasers, some smudge sticks and brushes. Now, remember, you can always substitute some of the materials and use things like ear cotton buds and things like that instead of the special materials that you would need to go to the art shop to get. So you can always rely on other materials like tissue papers, ear cotton buds, and so on. Let's start. To make this composition a little bit different, I've decided to create it within a circle. For that, we would need to sketch a circle that's more or less even. You can go freehand if you've had enough practice and you know how to do it without any problems, or you can use things like a compass, for example. Now, the thing with a compass, though, is that you're more than likely to have a little dot in the middle of your paper. And if you don't want for that to happen, you can always use something like a lid or a plate to trace over. This is what I have and this is what I'm going to use. Position it where you'd like your picture to be. So, I've got a circle. You can always correct it if it's not perfect. But this is as close as I would need it to be perfect. Next, I'm going to very softly mark out the composition. For those of you that are following along with me, you can work on the same picture and just watch at the screen and try and do the same thing. Or you can always find your own photograph of the clouds that you might really like and follow the same steps but paying attention to your own image. I am not using any specific image but I am looking at different photos of the sky for inspiration. Don't worry too much about exact placement, you just want to create a specific direction within your cloud composition. Now I'm going to go for a 3B pencil, so something that's not too hard but you don't want it to be extremely soft either. And this is just something to start with. So you want to go really soft. Remember, this is just the beginning and we will be making some areas darker and some areas a little bit lighter, even within our sketching. The clouds at the front will be a little bit darker, so I can just go in and create a deeper shade without worrying in terms of do I make it too dark at the moment it's looking like a weird ball but what you can do is grab a tissue especially if it's nice and thick like a paper towel or even a toilet paper would work you can just wrap it around your finger 
and give it a quick overall smudge and you can also use smudge sticks if you have those I will be switching between my proper materials and things that you can find around the house just to show those of you who don't have all of the materials that it's still possible to create proper drawings A little bit of smudging At this stage you might want to give a really good smudge so that you can create this backdrop for your clouds to be working with lighter and darker colors Don't worry if you come out of the circle that you've sketched we can always tidy it up later as long as it's visible and you can see where you have marked it that should be no problem there we go it kind of looks like a moon doesn't it maybe i should do a tutorial on the moon well you know what let me know in the comments if it would be an interest for you if I did a tutorial on how to draw moon, do let me know. I love reading your comments, guys. Okay, next. I'm going to go for a 4B pencil, which is just a little bit softer. If you don't have a big variety of pencils, you can still use the pencil that we used previously. doing now is I'm starting to separate some areas and create almost like darker patches remember we still have a long way to go so if it's not looking like clouds just yet don't worry about it at all it will I promise you Now if you are paying attention, you have probably noticed that I'm holding my pencil almost parallel to the paper. Not quite, but almost. And that is to have a larger surface area of the graphite touching the paper. Because I'm going for the softer look, rather than a cross hatching look this is something that would make the drawing process much easier for me if you have pencils like this where you've got really wide graphite you can use them too but if you don't remember your regular pencils are just as good this stage you can carry on with your tissue paper but I would like you to focus more on these lumpy kind of a like areas so you just go in in a circular motion to smudge them in or you can start using your smudge sticks and it's a little bit easier to have more control but as I said, you can still get away with using this, even at the later stages. If you want a nice edge, make sure 
and that you come as close to the edge as possible. Okay, so you can already see that something's starting to shape up and appear as it should, but not quite there yet. Next, I'm gonna use my patty rubber. If you don't have your patty rubber, you can always use your generic sort of a vinyl or gum rubber. Just tap like this. But if you do have patty rubber, this would be very very super handy at this stage. So now there are some areas that I know are already lighter than what I have there. I'm going to place them in so I want quite a bit of light coming from the top and then darker clouds on the bottom. So I'm just going to tap and gently pull up areas where I've got too much graphite to reveal the paper. And just like that. Now, if you guys are enjoying this video, please make sure to check out my Patreon page where for just $2 a month you can start supporting this channel if you love watching these videos. And also for $8 a month you get a chance to see more videos that are not available here on YouTube. So please check it out. You might like and find something suitable for yourself there. There are also um, giveaways and lots of other things. So please go there and check it out. And for now, let's get back to the video. Next, there are some areas within this field here that are catching some light from this, you know, area of the clear sky, the light shining through. So for that, I'm going to do the same thing and bring this out and you can see how now things are going to shape up more and more and they're going to appear more and more like clouds some on the other side too And you see how I'm using a different approach in terms of mark making with your eraser because at the moment you are drawing with your eraser. Many people don't think of this in such a way but this is exactly what you are doing. You are removing the graphite of the paper and you are revealing shapes and so just like with pencil you can create different effects by using it in a different way. Like here, for instance, I've just cleaned up quite a bit area. Next, I can create a really thin point and almost create a line. You can also create little spots. That perhaps won't be as obvious as a line but nonetheless can create the desired effect. Now at this stage you can say I'm happy with my clouds and I want to stop here. That's absolutely fine. But what I will do is I will take it a couple more steps further for those of you that want to see it progress a little bit more. And for that I'm gonna need my softer pencil. So 6B should be fine. If you have 8B, feel free to use that too. Now in some areas I'm gonna be building up darker shades. Now these darker shades don't necessarily cover large flat areas but might create just a little bit of that shadow on those fluffy parts of the clouds and you see how here 
kind of almost going in circular motions and creating these little bubbles. At the moment it looks strange, but I will show you what you can do. And again, as they go down, I would like to make them just a little bit darker. Now I'm going to go back to the smudge stick. Again, if you don't have a smudge stick, you can just Twist that around and use your paper towel. Now this magic should be done very strategically. Soften the highlights a little bit more just so that I can make them a little bit bright and only some areas and still have that as the lightest spot, which means that I need to darken this even more. back to my 6B and now we need to darken these clouds just a little bit more, you know the ones that are just at the front there in a very similar way we're going to go just like we did before the only difference is now we're making another layer and this layer is going to be even darker Same thing, going back with a smudge stick and strategically smudging the areas of the graphite. And again, you can stop at this stage or you can take it next step further, whatever you feel comfortable with. Now for this, I'm going to go back in for the putty rubber and I'm going to highlight some of the smaller areas this time around. So if before I was making large lines and sort of overall cloud shapes. Now I'm going to not only do that but also to highlight some sharp exact areas as sharp as this rubber will allow me to That's why I think it's such an interesting subject matter and if you are drawing this and using your own images 
you don't need to follow it exactly to the T, you can really just use your imagination and create these interesting shapes as long as you've got the right light direction you will be absolutely fine see how I'm turning my eraser as I go along that is allowing me to create a very natural line and very lifelike sort of a silver lining now here I want to pay a little bit more attention to these darker clouds the line is just a little bit more solid so I want to represent that in my drawing too And remember, clouds are not heavy, rigid objects. They're continuously changing, they're moving, but you still see them as a solid object when the light hits it in the right way. So it's important to try and carry that aspect across. And if random accidents can be a problem, for example, if you're working on someone's portrait, you don't want to draw their nose two centimeters off to the side or something like that. But here, these little accidents are quite welcome because they make this look much more realistic, much more lifelike because of the actual nature of the clouds themselves. Now at this stage you feel that you need to lighten some things up. This is a good time to do it. I will show you just a little example on the side here. Just by softly running your body eraser over can create that effect. Again, this is another stage at where you can say, I'm happy with my clouds, I'm done, and that's absolutely fine as well. But I'm gonna go and I'm going to create another layer of the shadow and the highlights. Just so that I can really take it onto the next level for those of you who have practiced before. to create a dark little cloud on the side there just to hug the composition next I'm gonna use a smaller smudge stick um, at this stage, I think using a tissue paper can be a little bit too much, so I would suggest to um, grab a, uh, you know, those cotton buds that are there for, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, that you might keep in your bathroom for cleaning your ears or makeup off or anything like this, that they would be very handy at this stage.
might want to break down so break up some lines like for example here you see i've had quite a long continuous line and it was all of the equal light so i'm just going to shade it in some areas so that it's not so uniform as i said before the more random your lines are the more natural your clouds will be Now I'm just making sure that I've blended everything out up to the edge. And you see now I'm just using this with the graphite that's collected on the tip. And I'm just creating a little bit of a variation in the shapes. Now, next, and it's not necessary, you can probably just go over maybe with a softer tissue, maybe not a tissue like that, but more of a facial tissue or you can use a brush and just really really softly what I'm doing here is I'm just merging things together it's not smudging it vigorously it's not getting rid of any lines but it's just just softening everything highlights are becoming just a little bit darker and darker areas just merging together If you paint, you can use one of your clean, um, dry brushes or, like me, this is a makeup brush that is pretty much not used for makeup, but I use it for drawing. What I will do as a last sort of a thing is I'm going to use my mechanical little eraser. Now if you don't have these erasers and if you don't draw regularly you probably wouldn't because they're not the cheapest thing you can buy. In that case I would suggest to grab your regular eraser and cut a little slice of it. So with a craft knife or anything like this you can just cut a little slither and then use that instead of this your eraser will not last very long but if you don't regularly draw you don't need to worry about it too much the ones is fine so I've got this eraser here and just in some areas I'm going to really take it back to the whiteness of the paper I'm going to mainly focus on the top area and I'm going to go with this as well to merge this highlight If you'd like to, you can add a couple of more highlights. If I can urge you to focus more on your lightest areas of your drawing. But then again, it depends on what it is that you're drawing and what images you are using for your inspiration. So what all the things that I'm telling you here are only a guide. And you can take away what you need and and leave what you don't I 
just like that look, you know, of the light just coming down you know, like after the storm the sun is coming back out again and life is going to be new and fresh again so now you can see that it's turning into this beautiful landscape of clouds next I'm gonna go back and for this and give a little bit more definition to some areas now this is perfect for those really really tiny small little things and our last step is to tidy up the outside area for that you can use any of the rubbers or erasers that you have I'm just going to use this with a nice sharp edge just to tidy up the area because with all that smudging you'd be carrying some of this across the finished artwork or you can say it's a study of the clouds or you can say it's just a dreamy um, landscape it is up to you how you like to call it but you have seen the full process from the beginning till the end and you can create or recreate a similar sketch yourself I would like to say a big big thank you to my wonderful patrons who are already supporting me on Patreon and I would also like to encourage you to go over there and check it out and don't forget to like this video if it brought you any relaxation or maybe you learned some new drawing tips subscribe if you haven't subscribed so far and if you are subscribing make sure to press the notification bell so that you are notified when the next video is out thank you very much for drawing with me I hope you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you next time for now make sure to watch some more videos that are popping out on the screen right about now see you soon